Within A Song of Ice and Fire, a lot of focus is given to the hero Azor Ahai. Azor Ahai is both a historical, heroic figure and a prophesized hero who is yet to come, as he was supposedly the person who saved the world from the previous long night, the previous invasion of the White Walkers. However, with that historical belief comes the belief that Azor Ahai will be reborn again in the near future to stop the next long night and fully stop the White Walkers for good. According to the prophecy as recounted by Melisandre and several others throughout the story, Azor Ahai will be uh, born again when the Red Star bleeds and when the darkness gathers. This will be after a long summer when the stars bleed and the cold breath of darkness falls heavy on the world. He shall be born again amidst smoke and salt. He will wake dragons from stone, and he shall draw from the fire a burning sword light bringer. These conditions have led to a lot of speculation over the years as to whether or not this prophecy is real, meant to be taken literally, and if it is real, uh, who would this Azor Ahai be in the modern era? As we know that Azor Ahai might be necessary as the White Walkers are returning once again. That brings us to today's topic of conversation, the character who is most often talked about within the story when Azor Ahai is mentioned, as Melisandre believes Stannis Baratheon is the reincarnation of Azor Ahai. It is good to note that there are two more conditions to this prophecy that aren't directly stated in the prophecy itself, but are stated at later dates by other individuals. Most notably that uh, Wood's Witch said that the line of Eris II and Rhaella Targaryen would birth the prince that was promised. And additionally, Rhaegar Targaryen, in a vision that is received by Daenerys Targaryen in the House of the Undying, says that Azor Ahai is the Song of Ice and Fire. Let's examine Stannis Baratheon as a candidate for Azor Ahai. After a long summer, a cold breath of darkness will fall heavy on the world. I think that's something that is applicable to everyone who is currently alive in Westeros, as that is just what is happening. Summer has ended, and a long winter full of White Walkers seems to be coming in the near future. He shall be born again amidst smoke and salt. This could represent Stannis' rebirth on Dragonstone, the time when he was essentially uh, supposed to be king after the death of his brother Robert, and when he fully embraced the faith of the Lord of Light, who seems to be fairly tied in with at least Melisandre's idea of Azor Ahai. He shall wake dragons out of stone. This has not happened for Stannis yet. This is not something that he has actively done by any means. However, should he decide to burn Shireen, this could reawaken Grayscale and end up waking that dangerous disease or dragon from the stone. Additionally, he did draw a burning sword from the fire, Lightbringer. However, it is remarked upon by everyone who sees Lightbringer that it's not necessarily the exact magical sword, as it does have a glamour on it, placed on it by Melisandre, which makes it glow, but it is a cold uh, light. It does not emit any heat, and is not the prophesized blade that is often discussed. While Stannis was not born of the line of Aerys and Rhaella, he does still have Targaryen blood from his paternal grandmother. Furthermore, when talking about the Song of Ice and Fire in the prophetic sense, not in the sense of the name of the series, Stannis embodies this perhaps more than any character so far in the story. His story is defined by both ice and by fire. The first couple books in which he appears, A Clash of Kings and A Storm of Swords, are mostly defined by fire. He is essentially bound to this red fire god by Melisandre and by his faith. And his biggest moment of defeat comes by the hand of fire itself on the Blackwater with the big explosion engineered by Tyrion, which is something we'll revisit later in the video. Furthermore, as we move into A Dance with Dragons, his story is entirely defined by ice. He is the one who is focusing on stopping the White Walkers and focusing on freeing the North from the Boltons. He has shifted from focusing completely on fire on R'hllor to focusing on freeing the North and stopping the right White Walkers. This is a strange focus on both ice and on fire that really no other character has actively focused on in the story so far. That is not to say that Stannis is a perfect candidate for this prophecy by any means. It seems quite likely that other characters, specifically Jon Snow, will embody the Song of Ice and Fire far better than Stannis. Stannis just seems to embody this quite a bit at the current moment in the story, which is not at the story's conclusion, if the story ever is concluded.
Much of the imagery around Stannis and the prophecy revolves around him being a false candidate for Azor Ahai, which is worth noting. Maester Aemon specifically says that there is no way that Stannis is Azor Ahai, as the sword he uses is definitely an illusion, a glamour, something that does not really fill the conditions of the prophecy as they are expected both by him and by Melisandre, as Aemon has had a hand in studying for the prophecy with Rhaegar in the past. However, there are other elements of the prophecy of Azor Ahai and of Lightbringer that Stannis strangely fits quite well. According to the prophecy, Azor Ahai attempted to forge his legendary sword Lightbringer three times. The first time, he attempted to cool it in water, and it broke on impact. The second time, he attempted to cool it in a lion, and it also shattered. And the third time, he attempted to cool it in the heart of his true love, and the blade finally lit on fire, and became the prophesized sword. Many people have speculated on the meaning of this as it applies to the modern canon of A Song of Ice and Fire, and it seems more likely than not that in the modern case of the Second Long Night, Lightbringer is referring to people rather than to the sword. Rhaegar Targaryen was obsessed with prophecy. This is attested both by the history books and by Aemon, who apparently talked with him firsthand about prophecy. And overall, he is just someone who was very focused on foretelling the future and hopefully preventing the end of days as brought on by the White Walkers. He attempted to make himself into this prophesized hero, and when that failed, he attempted to have children that would be those prophesized heroes. We see in a vision in the House of the Undying with Daenerys that he thinks that his children, uh, and specifically his child Aegon's song, is that of ice and fire. And furthermore, we see that he runs off with Lyanna Stark, hopefully to make another prophecy baby, that maybe being Jon Snow, according to certain people and according to the show. However, Rhaegar fails in all endeavors. He loses his war against Robert, Robert's Rebellion, and ends up dying in the Battle of the Trident. Another vision from the House of the Undying sees Rhaegar dying in the waters of the Trident, with rubies scattered all around, crying and saying a woman's name. This seems to be the first instance of the sword Lightbringer being forged. This is the blade that has been honed for years, being broken in the water and left as a discarded attempt that was unsuccessful in stopping the White Walkers. When discussing this theory, people tend to point towards Rhaegar's son Aegon being the second forging of Lightbringer in this instance, as he was broken by Gregor Clegane and the men of Tywin Lannister the Lion. However, I don't think that a baby would play an active enough role in a prophecy to be able to count towards this overall count of forged swords, particularly given the fact that Rhaegar so uh, perfectly tried to emulate everything himself. He attempted to figure out this prophecy and be the person who brings it to pass, despite the fact that it ended up failing. Aegon was a baby and wasn't really able to do anything. And what's more, there's the potential of Aegon, or at least someone claiming to be Aegon, still being alive, meaning that this element of the prophecy would potentially be moot as well, meaning that we would have to look for another candidate who might better fit someone who is attempting to make themselves fit the shape of a prophecy and ends up failing in doing so. As you might have guessed, Stannis Baratheon is the second forging of Lightbringer. He has attempted to shape himself into this image of the prophesized hero Azor Ahai, and has failed in doing so despite his best efforts, as he is just not the perfect candidate. He does not meet all of the criteria. So, in doing so, he attempts to claim the throne of Westeros, hopefully to protect it, from the White Walkers, but he is broken on the Blackwater, which is a phrase used directly by several characters throughout the entirety of the story. He is broken by the Lion, by the cause of Joffrey Baratheon, who is actually a Lannister, and by the strategy of Tyrion Lannister and Tywin Lannister. This represents the uh, supposed forging of the sword in the Lion, as it is another attempt to create this blade that ends up failing. Furthermore, this break doesn't necessarily result in Stannis' death. He is still trying to enforce the prophecy, but there's another chance that he might end up broken again, this time by the Boltons, who are allies of the Lion of House Lannister. The strongest evidence for this image of Stannis as the second forging of Lightbringer comes from Donal Noy in A Clash of Kings, saying that, quote, 
Robert was true steel. Stannis is pure iron, black and hard and strong, yes, but brittle the way iron gets. He'll break before he bends. And Renly, that one, he's copper, bright and shiny, pretty to look at, but not worth all that much at the end of the day. Stannis is the only character in our story who is explicitly compared to metal breaking. This draws a direct parallel to the main other instance of metal breaking we hear about in our story, that being during the prophecy of the forging of Lightbringer. Overall, this seems to lend further credence to the idea that this sword might be a metaphorical sword rather than a physical one, and that Azor High and Lightbringer might be two separate people. Both Rhaegar and Stannis have interesting connections to Jon Snow as well. Both of them serve as figures who are a sort of father in the life of Jon Snow. Not Jon's main father, being Ned Stark, but Rhaegar being Jon's potential biological father, and Stannis acting as a father figure in A Dance with Dragons, and really helping Jon prove his worth and figure out what he's going to do as a leader. The parallels between these two characters and the fact that they both have Targaryen blood makes it seem like this is kind of setting up for a final forging of Jon Snow as Lightbringer, or Jon Snow forging Lightbringer, potentially in the heart of Azor Ahai, that being Daenerys Targaryen. Stannis and Rhaegar both kind of fit the prophecy, but don't quite, and I think that that shows that the universe is gradually working its way towards the perfected vision of Azor Ahai. Yes, Rhaegar is born of the correct line, but he never woke dragons from stone. And his song really isn't that of a song of ice and fire. His is pretty much just fire. He's just a Targaryen with very little relation to the North until he meets Lyanna Stark. Furthermore, Stannis isn't born of the right line, and many of his correct conditions can be considered fabrications. So overall, it seems like these two are kind of approximately getting closer to the idea of Azor Ahai or to Lightbringer but they are kind of honing it for he who will be the eventual Azor Ahai. Both Rhaegar Targaryen and Stannis Baratheon attempt to make themselves the prophesized figure Azor Ahai and save the world from the White Walkers, from the Others, but fail in doing so. These two instances of failed living up to prophecy both very much line up with Martin's idea of prophecy, and overall represent the first two failed forgings of the legendary sword Lightbringer. So, this has been my first theory on Stannis. I will have several more in the future. I think this is uh, one part of a larger video that I ended up getting split up in the editing process. Uh, and overall, I'm quite excited to bring all of it to you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, do all that stuff. It really helps me out and helps me uh, know that you're enjoying the content, which I really love. Uh, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this theory in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear any suggestions for future videos as well, as I'm always looking for new ideas. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a good day. I will see you all soon.